How many pull-ups can you do? Four. Four. Get up there. Six. So you are screwed, oh, Dan. Let's not do this. Let's <laughs> delete that whole entire scene. <laughs> um, Dan has been expressing a desire to get more fit and healthy, so this morning he is going to be joining me on my run. Not as easy as it looks on your video, Spirit. All right, nice form. You look good. He's been doing great. Can't rack on the guy. He's doing. He's doing great. Is that it? You done? No. Woo. Good job. Okay, I'll, I'll see you. Good job, Dan. You got to start somewhere, and you did well. Bam, 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 Let's okay. fall forward now. This is Paul. What's up? Um, Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself. Ah, uh, shoot. You're about to meet a man who barely survived a shark attack and is now an inspiration to all of us. Three years ago, Paul DeGelder was with the Australian Navy, part of an elite dive team, on a dive to test new counterterrorism hardware, and then he was suddenly attacked by a bull shark. Uh, I'm Australian. Um, I opened up for Snoop Dogg in 1998, which was pretty cool. Wait, in what capacity did you open up for Snoop Dogg? I was a rapper. If I YouTube search, can I find a video of you rapping? You can't find a video, but you can find the song on iTunes. What's it called, Paul? Smoke and Hydro. That's literally what the album's called. Please welcome Paul DeGelder. It, it was the epitome of, of a sharky day. It was early in the morning, Sydney Harbour, so murky water. Uh, it was overcast. I was on my back in a black wetsuit and black fins kicking my leg. A bull shark came up from underneath me and grabbed me by the leg and the hand in the same bite. Decided it wanted them more than I did and started tearing me apart. It took me underwater in total agony, drowning me, losing blood, nearly dead, ripped out my hamstring and took off my hand. And so I had to swim back to my safety boat, missing a hand and part of my leg through a pool of my own blood where my buddies were waiting to give me first aid. They did that, they kept me alive. One of the guys had to stick his hand inside my leg and pinch closed one of the arteries. And a week later, I decided to have the leg removed because I couldn't feel it, I couldn't move it. It was gonna be useless for the rest of my life. So I just thought, stuff it, I'll just get them to turn me into a Terminator. How did you swim with n no arm and no leg? Slowly, but I, I you know, we get trained to deal with very stressful situations. Um, How do they train you to deal with a situation that's that stressful? Yeah, it was, that was, you know, up a few tiers from what I was used to, but the medical training kicked in and I thought, okay, my hand's missing, I'm bleeding, I've got to keep that wound above my heart. So I, I'm swimming like that with one arm out of the water, kicking one leg because I couldn't even feel the other leg and just going really slow. At the same time, the guys in the boat are coming over towards me. I didn't even think I was going to make it. I thought the shark was going to come back, it was going to grab me by the ankle, take me down and kill me. So it didn't matter. All I had to do was just keep trying until that happened. Show us your, how does this work? So this is called the Michelangelo. It's okay. made in Germany. It's about $90,000 for this thing. I think it's the best robotic hand in the world, uh, but mostly just because I can change it from this grip to beer drinking grip. 
if you're gonna have a $90,000 robot arm, it might as well have a beer drinking group. So the, the first time I met Paul was this past summer, and you had on pants, so I didn't see your leg. Yeah. And he's just like a fucking like jack tattooed dude, and I went and shook his hand, ready? Okay, but when you grab on, there's like a proper squeeze there. Well, that's still the girl grip though. It's firm, but it's not painful. But if I don't know you or you've been a bit of a dick, I may just squeeze down a little bit extra and wait for the like, little flicker in your eye. Yeah, like my eyes flicker. I think you could just crush. Like you have me at your, you could do whatever you want to me now. The last time, the, the version before this I had, I actually snapped in half arm wrestling, unfortunately. You were arm wrestling with a prosthetic hand. Yeah, like that, with a girl. There may have been some prior structural damage. There was some cracks in it because I'm pretty hard on this. I'm about as hard on my prosthetics as you are on everything. So I lost the hand and the leg. If I was gonna lose just one, it would not be a hand. Take the leg. Take the leg. Yeah, you can hand. replace a leg. So I've got a running blade, I've got a swimming leg, I've got a diving leg, I've got this amazing $200,000 leg, but you cannot replace a hand. Not yet. There's, there's no Luke Skywalker hand out yet. And what allows you to get back in the water three months later? What is it from inside of you that lets you do that? It's a deep love of being in the water. For, for me, I don't think you can get any closer to being an actual part of nature than being completely submerged in the ocean. Uh, it's relaxing, it alleviates stresses and fears, and it, you feel relaxed and it can wash away a lot of the, the stresses that are impacted on you throughout your life. Have you met Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, yeah, I know him. Has uh, he acknowledged is... to you that you're closer to the Terminator than he ever was? <laughs> yeah, not quite, no. good life or do I want a bad life? And a good life is gonna win every time. I, I was always, there was two things I was afraid of in life. Sharks and public speaking. Now I make shark documentaries for Shark Week and I'm a public speaker. So you never know what life has in store for you. You just could, you're like literally your biggest weaknesses can become your biggest strengths if you just face them head on. All this amazing stuff came out of the worst thing that has ever happened to me in my life. This is, this is the new 368 ma mascot, but this clickbait's too good. We're gonna have to save this for another episode. Okay, <laughs> all right, great. This is Aaron, by the way. Paul's GF, I haven't introduced Hi. yet. How many pull-ups can you do? Four. How many pull-ups can you do, Aaron? It's five. Really? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe Aaron and I can have a, have a yeah, contest, we'll do, we'll do a contest, and you guys have a contest, you and Paul. So Paul, we're gonna have Dan do a contest versus Aaron, and then you and I are gonna go head to head. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Four, five, six. So you are screwed, Dan. So what was the count? It was like nine and a half. Let's not do this. Let's <laughs> delete that whole entire scene. You got this, Dan. One, two, not bad. Five, I said better. Five. Five. There we go. Booyah. Okay. So that's, that's where the, the shark took it off from. But um, this is what we were discussing before, why I have problems with the camera. Because I've, I can't hold it with my right hand. Oh, that's what you have to do. Yeah. That's impossible. And then you, like, you, when you're moving your arm, you're, you're fucking with the zoom and the, you can't grip it. There's nowhere to hold Come it. Come on, camera companies, figure this out. What do I do? And this is what I use if anyone tries to mess with me as well. Let me feel this. Oh my. One, two, man. 
Nervous. Not even slowing down. 80. 90. Yes, in fact. 23. And going for 30. <laughs> 30. Come on. Okay. Ready? Right, Let's go. This, you got this. Three tens. Okay. Let's Six go. fives. One, One. Two. Ten. Eleven. Oh, Twelve. Yeah, yeah. You got this. You're nearly halfway. <laughs> nearly halfway. <laughs> Come on, I got you. I support this you both. That's matter. cheating. Good luck with the uh, the new goals of beasting up and getting swole. I'm gonna try. I'm never gonna reach 30 pull-up level, but I'm gonna try. There you go. Bye, Aaron. Good to see you. Bye, guys. See ya. See you next time. Bro, that's one badass motherfucker, dude. Hey. <laughs>